Hi, my name's George Stobart. Aha, just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bernie, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And may I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor, to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. So long, Hagenmeyer. Hey, Benoit. There's no need to shout. What do you want? Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean I'd get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. You haven't finished taking my blood pressure. Will you keep quiet? You're disturbing the other patients. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. Rather you than me, pal. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. You have it? Not yet, but it's being taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? We've met. 
What about the Hashashin? Uh, he's more likely to have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the sword. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeyer was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Breul. There's no Dr. Brail working here. He's an imposter! The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. Have you found out any more about the Knights Templar? Yes, I have. The guy responsible for the downfall was Philippe IV, the King of France, otherwise known as Philippe le Bel. I've heard of him. Well, he is known to history as Philippe the Fair, but I doubt if the Templars called him that. I'm sure André will tell you all about him. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mou? Oh, but you're referring to André. I'll let you work it out. You have left it very late, monsieur. Late for what? Anything. I am closing the museum soon. You wouldn't like to get locked in. I can tell you, not in this gallery. Why not? It is haunted, monsieur. You don't believe in ghosts, surely. Oh, yes, I do. Seven years ago, a lad managed to hide in here. He'd made a bet with his friends, I suppose. When I found him in the morning, he was cold as ice. 
and stiff as a bud. Well, what was the cause of death? They said it was a brain tumor. But on his face was a look of stark, desperate terror such as I have never seen before. Scary. Forget it. Don't even think of climbing in there, monsieur. You'll be suffocated. I always wondered how it felt to be a mummy. The rod turned smoothly, and the window above me opened. It is closing time, Monsieur Lobino. Already, there are just aren't enough hours in the day. More than enough for me. I can't wait to get home and put my feet up. Eh bien, see you tomorrow. Good night, Monsieur. Hey, Guido! Look at this! Quit fooling around, you moron! Get your ass over here and bring that flashlight! What the? Who's there? Let's get out of here! And when I woke up, I was at the police station. Luckily, I managed to persuade Rosso I was innocent. Poor George. What a mess. I bungled the whole thing. I don't think so. You made a pretty good job of distracting those two crooks. Yeah, but the killer got away with the tripod. No, he didn't. He's not the only one who can dress up in costume. You mean... It was you who stole the tripod? Oh, hell, Nico. I could have been shot. Those dogs are more likely to shoot their own feet. I just wish you'd told me your plans. We're supposed to be in this together. And how come you dressed up like a pantomime cat? Don't suck, Georgie, please. Oh, rats. And don't call me Georgie. Oh, I really thought you'd be pleased. After all, we've got the tripod. Aren't you going to try putting the gem on the tripod? I guess so. Nothing happened. Yeah. The gem fits perfectly, but what does that prove? Maybe the tripod has to be in a certain location. There's nothing on the manuscript to indicate where, though, is there? Oh, by the way, I had a visit from André Lobino. Oh, yeah. I hope you didn't mind me giving him your address. Not at all. It was lovely to see him again. 
He was over the moon when I showed him the manuscript. It's not often he gets that excited. He made a sketch of the knight's crest to take back to the museum. I believe he's identified the family who bear that crest. I sure hope so. Labino explained who the Hashashin were. Yeah? The cult of the assassins. Oh, boy! What do you think the purpose of this tripod is? On the manuscript, the gem is shown mounted on top of it. So, we risked a criminal charge to steal a display stand? Don't ask me. Maybe it's intended to hold the gem in a specific position. I have to go. Already? You only just arrived. Time and tide wait for no man. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, you with the balls. We? Oui? How did you learn to be a juggler? Juggler? What is this juggler? It's you. You juggle, that makes you a juggler. No, I am a jongleur. A jongler? What's that? Mon Dieu! A jongleur is an artist. A master of the contragravitic aerobaletic mysteries. In centuries past, the courts of the crowned of Europe had the jongleurs, witty erudite men to whom the monarchs turned in their hours of need. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Let me get this straight. Our enemies are at the borders, plague ravages the land, and the peasants are revolting. Thank God we've got Chuckles the jongler to throw his balls around. I don't think so. That juggling doesn't look so difficult. Oh, it does not, does it not? Perhaps you feel you could do better, no? I'll give it a try. Be my guest. I had no idea what I was doing. But this guy was obviously an idiot, so how difficult could it be? A lot more difficult than I thought. That's how difficult. Still, it was my big chance to be derided by complete strangers. Not so easy after all, is it? No, I guess not. Look, a red nose. Ah, you are a clown. A clown? No, if so, you would be a much better jongleur. For a moment, an idea capered around near the spotlight of my attention, but fell down the pothole of abstraction before I could focus on it. What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier? Ah, their last grandmaster, Jacques du Molay, was burnt on an island in the Seine in 1314. Wow. You're pretty well educated for a juggler. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Does this grease paint mean anything to you? A red nose and now grease paint? You are sure you are not a clown? Well, I was distracted by the idea again. Caper, 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 plummet. No, gone again. It didn't seem right to... Does this matchbook mean anything to you? You smoke? No, I don't. In that case, it means nothing to me. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hello again, officer. Hello again, monsieur. Ah, you are a clown. Do I look like a clown? No, 
Although you juggle like one. Nah, if I'd known you were a clown, it would have been amusing. And not a humiliation for you. What do you mean? Who ever heard of a plain clothes clown? He had a point. So you're saying that if I juggle badly with a red nose, I'd be the king of comedy. But if I juggle badly without it... You look like a pathetic loon. Oui, monsieur. You have it. What do you think of the juggler? Ah, he is excellent, most watchable. But he's blocking the thoroughfare and obstructing traffic. So? He is amusing. The traffic isn't. If he wants to block it, who am I to say no? You're a cop. Ah, oui. So I am. Ah, well. So you're not going to do anything about this guy? <clears throat> no. He probably doesn't even have a license. Ah, a license. This I had not considered. So what are you going to do? The instant I return to the station, I shall check. Return to the station? Why not just ask him? And spoil his concentration? What kind of a barbarian do you take me for? I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. There was a small crowd of five sightseers. It's a weird thing, but you can take the most intelligent people in the world, put them in their vacation duds, and hey presto, they look like morons. Why is that? Hi again. Oui? What is it this time? Look, a red nose. Oh, you say, whoop de doo I'd like to have another try at juggling, please. You have gone on a crash course, perhaps? No, I just had an insight into presentation. Huh? Allow me to demonstrate. The balls, please. If you insist on completing your humiliation, monsieur. Okay, now for my secret weapon. The juggler was speechless with rage. You could have mistaken him for a mime. And without a word, he collected his balls and left in a fury. Hey, you forgot one of your balls. Hey! But he didn't hear. Better still, deprived of his entertainment, the gendarme decided maybe he ought to do some policing for a change. There was a small crowd of five sightseers. It's a weird thing, but you can take the most intelligent people in the world, put them in their vacation duds, and hey presto, they look like morons. Why is that? I had no desire to talk to the crowd. There was a handle in the boat that fed out chain with a hook on the end.
The hook lay in a bed of chain. There were three arches, each with an inscription. There were three arches, each with an inscription. The inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about innocence. The wall seemed in very poor condition. Close up, I could see a faded inscription. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seemed to say, this is where the gallows used to stand. Maybe. Nothing hollow there. That sounded pretty solid. Hey, that's hollow. It was time for some brutal destruction. Close up, I could see the plaster was thinner where I'd broken through, and behind it were some cogs and a lever. Here goes. Hey, cool! Inside the hole, I could see one of the cogs had come loose and jammed the mechanism solid. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. In the end will be a beginning. An end to our enemies heralds our new day. Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Good. Mademoiselle? Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidence is growing. The corporations are becoming too large and complex for their own executives to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. 
We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. They are acting on hasty decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Excellent. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. The millennium is almost upon us and everything is in place for the rise of our new order. Almost. Professor, where is the broken sword? Oh, as we discussed last time, with the loss of the manuscript, our search is as a corollary hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars, <coughs> that is to say our predecessors, Hold on. These are the Templars? Must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the Sword of Baphomet's location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pigram. Pigram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near. And failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin. Plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you? that we have a sacred duty. A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now we have the opportunity to reforge it. But time is short. We need results. Not petty bickering. Not excuses. Now. Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apologies. We will find Baphomet and the sword manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, we're not exactly sure at present. Ha! But I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grandmaster. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klausner had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. 